Good morning. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to this ICAO pre seminar remote training on the Corsa Central Ready for the North, Central, and South America and the Caribbean region. My name is Jane Hopi, and I'm the director in charge of the environmental program in ICAO. This first presentation will provide you with an overview and the objectives of this uh, webinar. Next slide, please. So you are all aware of the postponement of the 2020 Corsair Regional Seminars uh, for a later date this year. We have not yet defined those dates and they will be announced to you as soon as we have more certainty on um, what is, is going to happen during the upcoming months uh, due to the COVID uh, impacts. We, uh, nevertheless, um, the training and the support to our states on Corsia uh, is something very important at this uh, point in time where you're all finalizing your preparations to submit uh, data uh, on the airlines reports to ICAO. Uh, therefore, we, we found that uh, having a remote online training uh, to start with, to make you more acquainted to uh, the, the Corsa Central Registry, would be quite useful. That would uh, highly facilitate when we come back and we can uh, train you directly in the face-to-face uh, -face trainings later in the year. So we have prepared this uh, remote online three-hour training sessions. Um, and we would have a few of them uh, following up uh, on uh, tomorrow, after tomorrow, on the 14th and 15th April as well. Uh, and we, with that, we will cover all the regions that we intended to cover with the Corsia yeah, uh, face-to-face trainings. Uh, please note that uh, this uh, pre-seminar is not a replacement of the 2020 Corsia Regional Seminars. We understand that you're expecting full support from Secretariat in training you on the CCR, but I'm sure that you are going to find that very, very useful. So, uh, on the Corsia yeah, standards and um, uh, that you have in Annex 16, from 1st January 2019, all airplane operators conducting international flights are required to monitor the CO2 emissions from these flights. Information compiled by the airplane operators in the corresponding annual emissions reports is subject to a third party verification. Okay, airplane operators to re are expected to report their uh, 2019 CO2 emissions to their states by 31st May 2020. Uh, uh, and 31st May 2020 is the deadline for the operators to submit that to states. We uh, do understand that some operators uh, right now um, are having some difficulties with having their reports um, to be verified uh, because of the impediments of travel uh, in some states. But we know that other states were very, very uh, um, ready with their reports ahead of time uh, in the beginning of the year and have already done the, the necessary verifications. We want to uh, reassure you that we in IK we are looking at that very closely and we'll be supporting states that need support uh, on their submissions uh, the best way possible. So you as a state you're due to report to ICAO by the 31st August 2020 and what you're going to submit to ICAO is your aggregate 2019 CO2 emissions data per state prayer um, and that's going to be made through the CCR, the Corsair Central Registry, okay? Be reminded that that is an ongoing process and you'll be doing that for the 2019 emissions and afterwards with your 2020 emissions next, uh, after next year. So, what is the, the objectives then in this pre-seminar? We really want to give you uh, a first glance and a first opportunity to use uh, the functionalities of the CCR. 
This seminar is only focused uh, uh, for uh, the main users of the CCR in the States. We are the, the focal points, the course of focal points. Um, we are sure that uh, by doing that pre-training with you, you will have some more familiarity with uh, the tool. And when we come to the with the face-to-face -face meeting, that will be very, very, very productive. So during the seminar, we are going to focus uh, in a few specific areas. We are going to introduce uh, what is this uh, central registry. Um, we uh, will show you the web interface. You, you, you by now you you have this web interface that you could already um, uh, work with uh, uh, remotely, and that gives you some experience on with uh, the tool that will be very useful when you do your final submission. Uh, we will be talking to you on how to update the CO2 emissions into the CCR in all ways that facilitate the transfer of that data into the, the CCR and how you do then finally submit the CO2 emissions to ICAO. So um, the format that we have is a three hour sessions, a session will have uh, two segments and then a 15 minute break so that you can stretch your legs a little bit. Uh, and the first segment will be composed of this welcome and objectives that we are doing right now. Then you'll be introduced to the CCR. We will have some question and answers and I'll, I'll tell you how we are going to deal with the question and answers in the next slide. Um, we'll have uh, then a, a, a demo of the CCR and we'll give you some time to get familiar with the CCR. And then we will open for the question and answers. And then after the break, we have the second segment, which will be uh, showing you a demo on how to, to report in the CO2 emissions. We'll do some exercise, practical exercises and we'll open for question and answers again. And um, we'll put some uh, demos on how you do a service request. Um, we will finalize by giving you again some uh, possibilities to ask us a few last questions and then we will be doing the closing of the, the seminar. Please note that the, each participant um, has received, has seen an account of their uh, states in the training version of the CCR and I, I repeat what you have now is the training version of the CCR. So just a basic rules of participation. Uh, some of you are, uh, are attending a, a, a web uh, seminar for the first time. Um, we have been now using this GoToMeetings for, uh, since we, we start working remotely, it works very well. Uh, it's easy to follow up. It's uh, quite easy to, to use as well, but uh, we want to make sure that all of you are hearing us well. So to avoid some potential issues with the audio, um, all participants will be muted during the presentations. So we want to ensure the quality of the audio. Uh, and uh, sometimes if you leave the, the microphones open, we can have interferences from the different parts of the world. So if you have any questions or comments, there is uh, this chat function on the right, you can see on the right, uh, and you can click them. Uh, and um, there's this speech bubble basically that you see on the top of your screen. And if you, if you click, you're able to put a question uh, over there. And the organizers uh, here will be addressing your questions, your comments after or during the presentation, depending on how uh, the presentation goes. So if, if we see that is a question that we will still be covering during the presentation, we, we prefer not to address. If it's something that's a doubt that at that moment could help all the others, we will address. But what we want to ensure is that at the end, all your questions are addressed. So you will have many opportunities to come back if you still feel that you, you, your question remain unanswered. So rest assured that we'll be taking good care of you. Um, with that, uh, you have seen that we have a lot of information 
already uh, available to you on Corsia. And you have seen in your emails that we have um, four additional um, leaflets that we prepared specifically on the CCR for you. We will be covering all of that during the, the presentations during this workshop. And with that, I thank you so much for your interest in joining us. And uh, I wish you all a very productive webinar. Thank you very much, uh, Jane. Um, hi, colleagues. Good morning to everybody. My name is uh, Stelios Pesnadzoglu. I am a program officer at the Environment Branch of the ICAO Secretariat. And one of my main responsibilities is the Corsia Central Registry. So over the, um, the next um, 80, um, 80 minutes or so, uh, we will walk you through some of the basics of uh, the Corsia Central Registry. And um, again, just like to highlight, as uh, Jane mentioned, we have the option to ask us questions uh, through the, uh, the chat function of uh, GoToMeeting, and uh, we will answer all your questions. So for this uh, next presentation, um, the focus will be to give you a very general introduction on the CCR. And um, I will start with the mandate that was given to the Secretariat for the developments of uh, the CCR. The first time that the notion of a central registry appeared, it was in the Assembly Resolution A393 in paragraph 20G, where the Council, uh, where the Assembly requested the Council to establish a consolidated central registry and make it operational no later than 1st of January 2021. Following the assembly resolution, uh, the ICAO Council took, did a lot of work development of Annex 16, Volume 4. And in the context of uh, the developments of uh, this new volume of Annex 16, the Corsia Central Registry was identified as one of the five implementation elements of um, Corsia. In the latest assembly resolution, um, A4019, the Corsia Central Registry appears in two different paragraphs. It is 19B and 19D. And in the first one, there is a reference to the development and the updates of ICAO Corsia documents, which relate to the Corsia Central Registry. And the next subparagraph, the 19D, um, it relates to the actual development of the CCR and um, now we have the mandate to have it established by early 2020 under the auspices of IGEO. So we, um, we are into, in early 2020. Uh, we have undergone a process through which we have developed the, uh, the Corsa Central Registry. And um, what we're going to offer to you through this uh, remote training is uh, a chance to get familiar with some of its uh, key functionalities as uh, Jane mentioned in her introduction. So in terms of um, some general information on how data flows between different stakeholders, we have used this slide before and some of you that have participated in other events that we have organized uh, last year, uh, the workshops and, um, um, and other events you have seen it before. I just would like to remind you that in for the Corsia Central Registry, we have three um, key stakeholders. The airplane operators, the states, which is usually the civil aviation authorities, and the ICAO Secretariat. In terms of how information flows between the different stakeholders, um, and then again, this is a very general um, graphic on how information flows. There is a lot more detailed, which is described in Annex 16 volume. I only want to give you um, a very general um, information on how information flows, just to give you a sense of where the CCR, what the CCR does and how it fits in into, um, into the work of Annex 16 volume four. So the whole work starts with CO2 emissions being monitored by airplane operators um, after the monitoring has uh, been completed, the open operators compile the information and submit to the state. The state aggregates information on CO2 emissions and submits to ICAO. ICAO again aggregates information even more 
and makes it available on its uh, public uh, website. At the same time, ICAO also uses information to estimate the sector's growth factor and make it available to the states and also make it available to the general public through its, um, uh, through its website. The sector's growth factor is used by the states to estimate the offsetting requirements of uh, their individual operators. The operators use this information uh, to, to purchase and cancel emission units. And then once they have done this, they compile the information and provide to their states. The state again aggregates this information and provides to ICAO and even after more aggregation, ICAO makes it available um, on its, uh, on its uh, public website. So again, as I mentioned in the beginning of this slide, there's a lot more information, there's verification, but I'm not going to try to describe all of this because it can become a very complicated uh, picture. But what I would like to highlight is what the CCR does. And basically what it tries to address is how states can report to ICAO and how ICAO can consolidate the information and make it available uh, to the states and also to uh, on, its, on its website. So uh, this is the part that the uh, central registry tries to um, facilitate part of the reporting. And um, it is not trying to address how information has been collected by the states. This is left up to the states to decide how they want to collect information from the aeroplane um, operators. So in terms of uh, reporting by states, um, we have, as you know, in, uh, we have different phases uh, for implementation. We have the baseline, which is the 2019 and 2020. Then this is followed by the pilot phase of the scheme, which covers the years 2021 to 23. Then the first phase, uh, the following three years, uh, the second phase, uh, which goes on until um, 2035. The information that is being reported by states uh, to ICAO uh, corresponds to all these different years uh, that, for which you know, Corsia uh, will be with us and will be used uh, to meet the, the, uh, the collective um, carbon neutral growth goal that we have is as, as I care. However, information from uh, different states for specific years will not all come at the same time. As you can see on this, um, uh, on this uh, table, information will come gradually, will be reported gradually from states uh, to ICAO. Starting in 2019, that was last year, uh, the requirement was for states to provide information on their airplane operators and verification bodies. Uh, of course, for 2019, we did not have the CCR. Uh, the Secretariat developed an online spreadsheet that uh, a lot of states use to provide information to ICAO. And we collected information on airplane operators and verification bodies, which has been made available on our website. 2020, um, again, later this year, there will be the requirement to provide information uh, for uh, the following year in terms of aeroplane operators and verification bodies. And also there will be a requirement to provide information on CO2 emissions for the previous year, for 2019. The, um, the Annex 16 Volume 4 also provides for optionally for states to provide information on the course on the use of course eligible fuels. But again, this information for 2019 and 20 is not being used for any calculations in terms of uh, Corsia and is not being taken into account in the baseline or for any other purposes, only uh, for information purposes only. Just to give you an example of, uh, you know, just using one year, for example, 2021, information on airplane operators for 2021 will be submitted uh, in 2020. So 30th of November this year, states will be providing information on the airplane operators that um, will be attributed to them for the year 2021. Also, 30th of November is a deadline for states to provide information on the verification bodies. 
that will be verifying 2020 information, but in the first few months of 2021. Information on CO2 emissions and uh, Corsia eligible fuels will arrive in 2022 uh, for the year 2021. So there is one year lag, um, one year delay, if you like, uh, for this information to be submitted to ICAO. And information on cancelled emission units for the year 2021 covering the whole of the pilot phase will be reported in 2025. So um, I hope you appreciate, you know, the, um, uh, the you know, information for a specific year will come at different points in time and um, will be uh, consolidated uh, by ICAO and this, this whole reporting will be facilitated by the Corsia Central Registry. In terms of what kind of information will be published on the ICAO website, this is already provided in the Annex 16 Volume 4 and there are four ICAO documents that will be produced um, containing information from uh, the Corsia Central Registry. The first one is the Corsia Aeroplane Operator to State Attributions, and so we have already made available three editions so far of uh, this publication on our website. The third edition was published in December 2019, and over the next few weeks, we will update this with some additional information we have received from states. Information on the Corsia 2020 emissions uh, will be, is expected to, uh, to be made available uh, by 31st of October, 2021. Uh, this particular document will contain the CO2 emissions for 2020, and this will be used to determine the first year in which a new entrant has offsetting uh, requirements. The third document is called the Corsia Annual Sectors Growth Factor, and so this information for the first time will be made available on by 31st of October 2022, and will be updated up annually uh, following the first edition. The last document, uh, which is called Information and Data for Transparency, this contains or will contain in the future a host of information, starting with the list of verification bodies. And then once states start reporting information on CO2 emissions, this information will be aggregated and will provide it in a consolidated format. So this document will contain average uh, CO2 emissions for the two baseline years, 2019 and 2020, on a state uh, per basis. And uh, after 2020, it will contain information on CO2 emissions, will be aggregated for all aeroplane operators on state pairs, uh, but also there will be other information and data on CO2 emissions for each aeroplane operator. Once states start reporting information on uh, Corsia eligible fuels claimed, this information will be included in the same documents. And um, of course, later on in 2025, will start including information that document on the offsetting requirements and emission units cancel. So far, we have produced five editions of uh, this particular documents, and this only relates to verification bodies data. The latest version of this document was published in early March 2020, and um, another, uh, another edition of it will become available in, uh, with more information from states has been reported using the online spreadsheet. Uh, Jane mentions in uh, her introduction that we have already made available two leaflets that deal with the Corsia Central Registry. We produced uh, those last year and we made them available uh, during the workshops that we had in uh, 2019. But you can also find those on our, uh, on our website. You can download them from there. Uh, these are the, um, the original two leaflets we had produced. For the CCR specifically, we have produced four more, and um, two of them will be, uh, you know, very relevant for the training that we gonna uh, that we are doing in this remote fashion um, uh, this um, uh, today. So, in terms of uh, the CCR implementation, um, the CCR. It has been implemented as an online web application. It is supported by a database and it is hosted uh, using cloud services. 
I'm going to highlight a key, uh, four key features of uh, the CCR uh, because these are extremely important for your work as a Corsia focal points. First of all, you have to um, keep in mind that there is one CCR account per state. However, multiple people within a state can have access to this CCR account. But these individuals, they have to be authorized users. And we're going to discuss about what are the different users in, um, in the CCR on, uh, on the next, on, um, uh, on the following slides. But it's really important that these individuals must have an authorization to use, to, be, to have access to the information in, um, uh, in the CCR account of one state. And one, each one individual will have access to only one uh, state's account. I'm sorry. Um, what so we also have in mind is um, that the um, to have access to the CCR, you need to you you're gonna go through a secure portal. Each one of you will have um, you have a password, and also these passwords um, will be authenticated through protocols within the system. Also, this is extremely important because uh, some information in the CCR may be confidential. So this is not an open website. This is not an open application that anybody, um, you know, can access. Uh, so, you know, the first point about authorized users and the second point, uh, try to ensure that the people that they need to have access to a state's account, they do have access uh, to all the information there. There is a very simple way of entering data, and this can be done in, um, um, in ways that we're going to show you later um, in this uh, remote training. So this, uh, in very brief, this can be done through predefined forms, um, and it can be done manually, or you can upload information uh, using um, uh, comma-separate value files. But we're going to give you some more details on this a little bit later. And another important element is that or everything that you are doing in the CCR as a user is being traced and is being timestamped and a record is being kept of who did what when. And this is extremely important because uh, it, is, it has to be understood, especially by the Corsia focal points, of who made changes and what kind of changes is where. So if you need to go back and retrace your steps and retrace of who uh, introduce some changes to the CCR, you can do that through records that are being kept within um, the database. Information that has been submitted uh, through the CCR to ICAO cannot be deleted. It can be changed if you want to change information after you have submitted, but a, a record of the information uh, the information that was previously submitted will be archived and will be stored into the system for any future use um, that there may be need of it. So these are the, the, the four key features of um, the CCR. And I mentioned about the different users. We have for the CCR four key user groups or roles, um, if you like. We have Corsia focal points. And a Corsia focal point, as you all know, is a person nominated by his or her respective state. And within the CCR, the Corsia focal point is responsible for uploading and changing state-specific information. But also very, very important, the Corsia focal point is the only of these user groups that has the responsibility of approving and submitting the information and data to ICAO. This is extremely important uh, for you to remember, and um, I will explain a little bit later why. A state user is another group, is another user group within the CCR, and this is a specific user nominated by the Corsia focal point of a state. And this individual will have access to functions relating to uploading and changing state specific information. However, a state user cannot submit information and data to ICAO. This is one of the very important differences between these two groups. 
The third group is the IKO super user. And this is IKO staff that are gonna be responsible for the management of the information. Um, the IKO super user will check the submission by states for any uh, problems with the formats of the information and also are responsible for preparing the IKO course yeah, documents. The way information is being stored in the CCR is uh, what is in what we call as year records, individual year records. And each one of those year records is associated with a specific state, a specific reporting year or compliance period, if we are talking about cancelled initial units, for example, and a specific reporting area. So as an example, in the CCR, the way a year record is being um, uh, has been uh, named, if you like. Um, for this particular example, Canada 2019 aeroplane operators basically signifies that this particular year record contains information and data for all aeroplane operators attributed to Canada for the year 2019. So this is a way to try and um, group the information and um, um, make sure that it is traced within the system and it can be tracked to a different specific state, specific reporting year and a specific reporting area. If you want to think of, you know, this year records in a, in a sort of in a some more simplified way, think of it as a filing cabinet. You're buying, you're buying a filing cabinet for your files, for your records, for your papers, for your books, whatever this might be. Each one of these filing cabinets um, basically will contain information for a specific topic. So for example, there will be one cabinet that will contain information on the airplane operators for 2019 for your specific state. In the next one, you will include information on verification bodies for the same year, 2019, and also CO2 emissions for 2019. So each one of those you know, filing cabinets is one of these drawers, if you like, uh, they contain information for um, a specific reporting area and a specific year. And this will continue in 2020, you will, you know, fill up, you know, three more of those uh, uh, filing drawers. And as time goes by, your cabinet will get, you know, fuller and fuller. From 2021 onwards, information on Corsia eligible fuels will, um, you know, be stored in the system. And uh, of course, eventually for the first pilot phase, information on cancelled emission units will be, um, will be provided in the system. And this, you know, this picture that you have on your screen right now, it goes only until 2023, but this will continue for the duration of, um, um, of course, yeah. So this is the general, um, look, if you like, of uh, what your account will look like. But within its individual, you know, draw, there's information. And again, this information is being stored in what we call entries. So, for example, for um, an aeroplane operator, for 2019 aeroplane operators, this individual entry, it will be associated with one aeroplane operator and all the information associated with this particular operator. So it is the name of the operator, the attribution method, the identifier, its address, and so on and so forth. If you have a record which links to CO2 emissions, then you have different kind of entries, which are associated, for example, with a specific state pair. So you would have uh, the departing state, the arriving state, the amount of CO2 emissions, uh, which are associated with a specific uh, state pair. And also you will have other information, for example, whether this particular state pair is confidential or not. That's another, um, another specific field for this particular entry. So this is um, in a very general way how information is being stored in um, the CCR. Um, another important element of uh, the CCR is how information flows between different users and also how it has been processed within the system. So each one of those year records has a specific status and this status 
changes over time and each change reflects uh, some, something different. So when a new year record is being created, its status is being by default set to in progress. And a year record with a status in progress means that this particular year record can be modified. So information can be added, can be edited, can be deleted. You can do a lot of different things, have a lot of um, options there. You can change your information uh, to uh, reflect uh, you know, what the status of the information is in uh, for this specific um, uh, year record. And both the Corsia focal point and the state user can make changes to a year record which has been marked as in progress. Once the Corsia focal points and the state users, they are done with inserting information, they are adding, deleted, whatever they need to do, then they can change the status of the year record to complete. And by doing that, this signifies that all the information there is complete to the best of your knowledge. And by changing from in progress to complete, the record becomes read only for the state users. So only the Corsia focal points can review the information. And if they need to edit the information, they can do so in a complete record, but only the Corsia focal points, not the state users. I'll show you later how the Corsia focal point can allow the state user to make you know, further changes. But for now, let's focus on, on these four um, you know, different entries over here. So once the Corsia focal point has completed this review and has determined that the information is uh, ready to be submitted to ICAO, then it can change the status of the year record to ready. And then this information automatically submitted uh, to ICAO. Once the information is submitted to ICAO, then it cannot be changed by the Corsia focal point or the state user. Once the ICAO super user receives the information, then it will, this particular person will check the information. And if everything is okay with it, they, they can lock it. And a locked record is the one that will be used to produce reports and do any further uh, calculations, for example, to calculate the sector's growth factor. So for these are the four different status for the year records. And what I also would like to um, highlight is that um, once a year record is submitted or is locked, then it cannot be edited by the Corsia focal point. However, if a Corsia focal point, you know, after submitting to ICAO, identifies that there was a mistake or they want to make a revision, the system allows for such a situation and the Corsia focal point can request ICAO to unlock or release the, the year record further editing. Um, and then I will show you on, um, uh, on the next slide how this, uh, this can be done. Also, I would like to uh, point out that in accordance with Annex 16, Volume 4, if a state does not submit data to ICAO, then ICAO can fill in this gap um, with um, information on CO2 emissions that will be used uh, for the calculation of the sector's growth factor. So, this, if, if you have a situation like this, which um, I, I don't believe it will happen, but you know, if it happens, if we have a situation where a state is not able to submit data, then this information will be marked as ready ICAO data to identify it as information coming from ICAO and not directly from the state. So in terms of the reporting process of uh, the CCR, um, in very, um, I, I will walk you through it in a, in a, in a very um, simple way, what is the simple uh, reporting process. And the first thing you need to do in the CCR is basically to select a reporting area. And by reporting area, we have uh, the five areas uh, for which states need to provide information to ICAO. So information on airplane operators, verification bodies, CO2 emissions, 
coarsely eligible fuels and cancelled emission units. So for each one of these reporting areas, first of all, you have to determine whether a year record exists. If it doesn't exist, then you have to create a year record. And of course, as we said in the previous slides, the status of this new year record will be in progress. After you have created a year record, or if the year record already exists, then you select this particular year record and you start adding and editing information and data. Once you have completed this part, you can change its status to complete. And then the Corsia focal point will review this information. And when the Corsia focal point determines that the information is ready to be submitted to ICAO, it changes the status to ready. This submitted to ICAO, the ICAO again checks the information and uses the information to publish ICAO Corsia documents and locks the year records um, for, uh, for this cycle. So this is, these are the, the main steps for the CCR, how the whole thing works. It's a very simple reporting process. It has some more uh, details in it, and um, I'm gonna walk you through it, um, not in this slide, but in the, in, the, in the following slide. So as we mentioned earlier, we have the three user groups. Um, each user group uh, has specific responsibilities. And um, on this slide, we're just also you know, highlighting some more specifics in relation to what the Corsia focal point, the stake users and the ICAO super user can or cannot do. So to create a new year records, this can only be done by the Corsia focal point or the ICAO super user, but it has to be done by the Corsia focal point. That should be um, option one. Um, the ICAO super user can create a record, but only as a last resort, only if there is a problem and the Corsia focal point cannot do uh, this particular um, cannot do this particular action. In terms of adding, editing, or deleting information, all three groups can, can do it. Um, Corsia focal points are the only ones as a group that can submit information to ICAO. Stake users cannot do that. And of course, for the ICAO super user, it's not an applicable uh, action. And of course, it's only the super user that can publish ICAO Corsia documents on um, on, on the websites of ICAO. So now taking all this information into account, I'm just gonna walk you through into a bit more detail about um, how the information flows within um, the CCR. So as we saw in the, on the previous slides, everything starts with a Corsia focal point creating a year record. So once this is done, then the default status of this year record is set to in progress. So once this is done, then the state user and the Corsia focal point can add and edit information in this specific year record. Once all the information is in, uh, then the, the status of this year record can be changed to complete. Once this is done, uh, the Corsia focal point receives an automated email notification that a state user has changed the status of the year record to complete. And then the Corsia focal point can review all the information and the data that are contained in this specific year record. So then the Corsia focal point has to decide whether revisions are needed. And again, as I mentioned earlier, revisions can be made by the Corsia focal point him or herself. However, the Corsia focal point can also request the state user to make changes. And if revisions are needed, and a state user has to make these changes, then the Corsia focal point can change the status of the year record back to in progress. And by doing that, an automated email notification will be sent to the state user, and the state user can add edit information and then uh, continue again by changing to complete and back up into this point over here. If the Corsia focal point determines that there is no need for any revisions, everything is correct, everything is fine, then the Corsia focal point can change the status of the year record to ready. The moment that this is done, an automated email notification is sent to the, to the ICAO super user, and the ICAO super user checks 
this particular year record for format correctness. And again, a determination has to be made if there are any errors in terms of format. If there are errors, then the IKEO super user can change the status back to in progress and a notification will be sent to the Corsia focal points for changes to be made either by the Corsia focal point or by the state user, depending on what the situation may be. If, however, there are no errors, information is correct, then the status of the year record is changed to locked, and this information can be used for the purpose of uh, publishing IKEO Corsia documents. So this is um, a bit more detailed uh, data flow process, which um, you know walks you through basically the different parts, and this is very important for all of you to understand all of, you know how you know the, what are the different roles of the different users and also how this links with the status of the data at different points of the um, of the data flow later on we're going to go through this uh, diagram one more time uh, just before we go through the co2 emissions in uh, the second segment of our um, uh, of our remote training um, but I will leave this on your screen for a few more seconds, uh, just for you to um, to have a look at it. And um, then we'll continue uh, coming to the end of this uh, first presentation. Again, I would like to remind everyone that if you have questions, you can send them to us uh, through the chat um, option that we have. Um, so we we'll collect all the information and we will, um, uh, we will answer them uh, one by one. Okay, so um, some of the key things to remember is that each Corsia focal point and state user is connected to one IKEO state. And as a state, as a Corsia focal point and state user of that state does not have access to the information of any other IKEO state. If an IKEO state does not provide its annual aggregate emissions report to IKEO, then IKEO can fill the gap in the CCR and can calculate total sectoral CO2 emissions and eventually the sector's growth factor in a given year in accordance with the provisions um, of Annex 16, Volume 4. Again, uh, we hope that this will not be the case. We will not have to do that for states. But if um, information is not provided to IKEO, um, and we have to do it and we will do it, but the information in the system, we will be um, marked as already IKEO data to make sure it is clear who is the originator of the, of the information. The year records, the status of the year record changes in the system and it has four different, uh, we have four different statuses in progress, complete, ready, and locked. And, uh, for you to remember a complete record um, is read only for a state user. The Corsia focal point can change the status of a record from complete to in progress um, and for further, if further editing by the state user needs to be done. A ready or locked record is read only for a Corsia focal points and state users and um, the IKO super user can change the status of a record from ready or locked to in progress for further editing at the request of a Corsia focal point. And we will see this um, when we discuss the service request at the end of the segment two um, later today. I mentioned um, earlier and Jane mentioned in uh, her introduction um, about the production, the, uh, the creation of uh, new leaflets. We have sent to you uh, four PDF files. Uh, the first one, uh, the one which is uh, Courses and Registry A, provides um, information on uh, the Courses and the Registry. And what we did for this particular leaflet is we uh, collected some of the key points that we presented um, earlier in this presentation, some of the slides, and we have collated. So for you as a quick guide, if you like, you can put this on your desk to get an, to get like to 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 have a reminder of uh, the user groups of uh, what are 
uh, the functions of uh, each of the user group within the CCR, the general data flow process, and also the summary uh, for the year record status. Um, and again, you know, if you have any comments on those leaflets, um, then you would be uh, more than happy to receive them. And, um, you know, in the future, we can improve them um, as we move forward. So this is the end of my, uh, my presentation on the introduction of the CCR. Um, we have allowed in our program for uh, questions and answers. And again, um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send them um, through the chat function of the GoToMeeting room. We have a question about if there is an offline version of the CCR. The answer to this one is no. The CCR is only an online um, application and um, there is no offline version of it that can be used on your own personal uh, computers. So only online and for it, you know, for you to use it, you need to have um, access, of course, to the internet. And um, also you need to have a uh, web browser that is, um, uh, that, is, that is compatible for the CCR. Uh, be mindful that Internet Explorer, uh, because it is not being supported by Microsoft anymore, is not a recommended web browser for the CCR. You can use, however, uh, Edge, Microsoft Edge, uh, which is supported by Microsoft, and uh, the CCR works perfectly on it, no problem. We have tested the CCR also on other uh, web browsers, for example, Firefox, um, Google Chrome, and it works uh, fine. We have not identified any problems. Uh, there was a question about getting access to the presentations. Uh, we can make the presentations available. Uh, also be mindful that we are recording uh, this session. So we will make it available later on um, as a video uh, to all of you. So you can, um, you know, you can watch again in, at a future point in time. We received a question, but I don't think it's um, the complete one. The, the question started how the course here for but then there is no continuation after that. So if you would like to resend that particular question, I would appreciate it. Um, there was a question about on our graph, we had, we said that, um, let me read the, the question to you and then I will try to answer it. Why is the pilot phase data presented 2025 and not 2024 when the first phase starts? Or oh, that's when the first uh, phase ends actually. Uh, it was anticipated that the pilot phase data would be used to inform the first phase. Um, just to be very clear, when I put um, the slide on, maybe it's just put back on again, uh, just to be clear. Um, it was here. There is information. Um, there is information which comes again at different points in time. Information for the pilot phase is what you see here as the area. And um, there is one year lag uh, between the 2021, 2022, and 2023 when it comes into the CO2 emissions. So as we, um, as I explained earlier for 2021, information on CO2 emissions will be reported in 2022. And for 2022, it will be reported 2023. For 2023, it will report 2024. For 2025 is when information on the emission units will be reported by states to ICAO, uh, not CO2 emissions. So this is uh, 2025 is the time uh, for reporting only council emission units. I hope this addresses this, uh, this question. Yes, on the question about the verification, um, 
the, uh, the data that will be uploaded in the CCR is info, information that um, you know, will, be, will be reported to you by airplane operators and verification by this after the verification process has been completed. And this relates specifically to the information, again, on this table um, in relation to CO2 emissions, course here eligible fuels and cancelled emission units. So this information will be verified, this information will be verified, and of course, the council of the mission units data will be verified. So after the operator of the verification body has submitted all this information to the state, that it will, call, will compile this information and will uh, report it through the, uh, the CCR. So it is a verified information. Of course, there is no verification uh, for the list of airplane operators and the verification bodies. The other question is how the Corsia focal point can nominate a state user. Um, this can be done through either um, an email message that will be sent by the Corsia focal points to, uh, um, and uh, you know, for the time being, uh, it is the responsibility of ICAO to create accounts for the different users in the CCR. So the Corsia focal point will have to send to ICAO an email message uh, to request for access to the CCR for a state user. Alternatively, this can be done through the system through um, a service request, but this will show to you later how this can be done. Um, on, okay, there's one more question. How many state users you can have? You can have as many state users as you want. There is no limit to how many state users. There can be one Corsia focal point, but many state users um, for um, states account. Okay, uh, what I'm gonna do next is actually I'm gonna log in into the CCR and I'm just gonna walk you through some of its um, you know, main parts on, um, on, on the homepage. I hope that all of you have received an email message from Toronto, um, giving you uh, with a link where you, that you can use to actually set up your password on the CCR. Uh, this email message was sent yesterday, and um, I hope you have all received it and you have all created accounts on the CCR. But if you're having problems, then please let us know. Send us um, in our message, and we will try to help you uh, while going through. Um, uh, you know, this uh, next part of this uh, presentation. So let me um, log in into the CCR. The, um, the address of uh, the CCR, the train version of the CCR is uh, CorsiaToronto.com. Uh, this is uh, again for the training version. Um, the, um, the version one of the tool may have a different web address, but we'll provide this information to you at a different point in time. So if you type into your web browser, corsia.toronto.com, you will arrive at this page. And this is where you actually enter your um, information. Um, I'm, I'm gonna log in as a tech user. I'm sorry. If you do not, um, if um, the email message that you received has expired, what you can do is you can use the username in the email message from Toronto, and then you can click in forgot passwords, the link that is underneath uh, sign in. Once you do that, let me do it now actually, before I do that, let me do this now so you can all see how this is done. So let's assume that, um, you have received the email message from Toronto and it has expired. The reason it has expired is because it has, um, it, it will not stay live forever, this particular link. But this doesn't mean that you cannot create a password. So you have received, uh, the account is there in the CCR. So if you have received and you cannot create it through that link, you come here, you click forgot password, and then that's where you provide your email or your username. Uh, should be identical, uh, but um, uh, in some. So once you uh, 
click once you provide your email, um, the, an automated email message will be sent uh, by Toronto again with another link to set up your, um, your password. So let me again try to log in. So once you have your username, you have your passwords, and you enter this information, that's the home page that you will see on your screen. And there are different parts to this um, home page. First of all, your user information will appear in the box somewhere in the middle of your of your screen. Uh, it's user information. That's where you will see uh, your email and your specific role. The name of your state appears at the top left of your of your screen. Uh, now I am the Corsia focal point of Monaco. I have logged in as that. Um, so this is the name of the IKO state, and that's my role uh, as Corsia focal point underneath the IKO logo. You can also see this information by clicking on uh, the top right corner uh, where you see your username. Basically, if you click on that, then um, another pop-up window appears where you can, through that, you can change your password. There is another link there about uh, information in the CCR, very uh, primitive information for now. And this is where you can log out as well from the CCR by clicking on, on the log out uh, button. Uh, what you will see on your screen, of course, doesn't have this bottom part, uh, which is special for me, um, as I have set up my account slightly different. So you, what you will see goes up to this gray box over here. So this is how you see your information. Um, and if you don't see your information on the screen, then there's something wrong and you have to let us uh, know immediately. Also, another very important point is uh, because there is a possibility that uh, you will be uploading confidential information in the CCR, you must never ever give out your username and your password to anybody else that is not authorized to use the CCR. If you have included confidential information, if you have uploaded your confidential information on the CCR and you provide your credentials to somebody else, then this information is not confidential anymore. So you have to be extremely careful how you manage uh, your password and your username if uh, you at any point in time realize that somebody has knows your password please please let us know immediately and of course change your passwords using um you know the system and what i showed you earlier about you know how when you forgot your password you can also use the same process to change uh, your password so it's extremely important to remember never ever give out your password um, and your username uh, for the ccr if somebody needs to have access, please let us know and we will make them a state user. Now, the second part of, um, uh, of your homepage is what is called IKEO state information. Then what you have is uh, you have two links. One is to view your um, information about your IKEO state. And the other one is uh, to view information about the different users um, that have access to uh, your state's account. So if you click on the eye icon next to view IKEO states, then what will come on, what will pop up on your screen is this page where you will see the name of your state. And then you will have the option to look at the information um, in this particular part of um, the CCR by clicking on the eye icon. So if you do that, if you click on the eye icon, then this is what will appear on your screen. There are five different tabs. The first one is called details, and that's where you're going to see again the name of your state. There's another field called IKEO state code. For now, this is empty, and all this information is only uh, it's read only. You cannot change anything. Only the IKEO super user can change information on this um, on this particular tab. And again, for uh, for those states, for a lot of states, we have not set right now whether they are a small island developing state or whether they are a least developed country 
or a landlocked developing country, but this will be set in the version one um, of the two. This is the tab one. The second tab is called CCR user, and that's where you, you are supposed to see uh, users in your uh, account. So there you were supposed to see your name um, and uh, your first name, your last name, um, and also your email. Uh, there is um, the possibility for you to add more information, um, if you like, in uh, this uh, particular um, this particular instance. Uh, but again, this information is optional. You don't have to provide information about your phone number, your title, job description, or anything else. It's again optional, up to you if you want or not. The third tab is called Corsia Participation. Again, you don't have you cannot change that uh, yourselves only ikea can change that and this is based on the notifications you have received so far for states that have voluntarily um, they, they have indicated their voluntary participation from uh, 2021 onwards again you can look at the information uh, if you like in a bit more detail again the name of um, of your state the year uh, what is the participation status, what is the criterion for that. And um, this information, again, is uh, based on what we have received so far from states, indicating their voluntary participation. Uh, as we, as time goes by and we receive more of voluntary participations, we will update this particular tab for all uh, the states. The fourth tab is RTK data. And this relates to RTK data for 2018. Again, you cannot change this information, this information that only can be changed by uh, iCare. The fifth tab is uh, what is called the iCare State Journal. And I don't know if you remember on one of my slides, I mentioned that everything, every single action is being tracked in the system. And this is how it is done. For every single screen that uh, you will see in the CCR, there is a journal tab where you can actually, you know, have access to who did what when. So you can see over here that uh, for um, this particular this particular area of the CCR, the details area, uh, there have been a number of changes, and uh, this they have been changed by different users. And this is how the system, you know, keeps track. You can see when these changes were made, um, you know, the time, uh, the date and the time, what has been added, what has been removed. And um, this um, information, you know, can go back to the beginning of uh, the creation of um, your, uh, your, your, your state's account. So you can click on uh, the different, um, you know, number boxes at the, at the bottom. Uh, if you see any, in your case, you might not have that many changes. I mean, this is just an example where you can see uh, all the different changes that have been tracked over time. And this goes back to 2000, um, what is it? I think 2019, 25th of uh, April uh, 2019 is the first entry when it was added. And from then on, there were a number of changes made uh, to this particular uh, part of the CCR. And this is, again, uh, this journal is specific for this part of the CCR and different journals are being created for the different parts um, of the CCR and you will see that um, later on in, in our presentation. So this is, um, you know, all information about your ICAO state, about the different users, participation, and again, you only have access to very limited parts of um, this information. It's just only uh, for information purposes only for you. Now, the next part of, um, of your homepage is uh, the navigation menu. And this is on the left-hand side. And this is where you have a number of different options. Report aeroplane operators, report verification bodies. These are the reporting areas that we saw in my presentation earlier. CO2 emissions. And for course, your focal points, there is one more, in addition to the five reporting areas, there is the additional option to for a service request. And we're going to discuss this at the end of our segment two uh, later today. For uh, the navigation can be is, is visible on uh, on all different uh, icons of the CCR and you, you can use it to go back and forth and you can 
change between different screens. If um, you would like to uh, maximize the real estate of your screen, you can minimize um, this uh, navigation menu by clicking on the arrow at the bottom. And if you do that, then you see that this has been minimized now and you can only see the icons. Um, if you put your mouse over each icon, you will see uh, the specific area, what it, what it does, it reports CO2 emissions, etc., etc. If you want to maximize it, again, you can click on the arrow and it's back to where it was before. Another important feature of uh, this navigation menu, there is these numbers, which are uh, white numbers in a red box. And basically this indicates how many year records there are for each specific reporting area and including the service request for the Corsia focal points. So for now, for Monaco, this is zero because there have been no year records created for this particular state for any of those um, areas. The fourth area of your homepage is your, it's the bottom of your screen basically with six boxes, each one of which uh, corresponds to the menu on the left hand side, the navigation menu. So you have one box for reporting airplane operators, one for verification bodies and so on and so forth. Again, the numbers is zero again, corresponding to those, um, you know, red numbers in the red boxes in your navigation menu and indicate the number of the year records available uh, for uh, each of the reporting areas. In the beginning, um, this of course will be empty and you will not have that many year records, but over time, this will become a very useful uh, feature. So if you want to look for a specific year record, then you can use uh, this part, the bottom part of your screen to search for um, the 2025, for example, uh, report on airplane operators or you know something different. The next part of your screen is what is called my favorites. This is where you can create basically shortcuts to screens that you would like to have a quick access to or which you visit you know very often. And you can create as many uh, my favorite links as as you want. So for example, you know let's go back to you know, view ICAO state data and uh, let's go back to um, um, to this particular screen. Let's say that this is one of your favorites you would like to have quick access. So instead of having to go through two different clicks, you want to create a shortcut for it from your home page and you can have quick access to it. The way to do that is uh, by clicking on the star button or the star sorry icon um, that you will see at the top of your screen. So if you click on the star, there you've been asked to give a name for this. So let's say this is my I state. That's what I want to call it. And save. Now, what this has done is if you go back to your home screen, this it has created a link. So now directly from your home page, you can go if by clicking on that you can automatically go to this particular screen so you don't have to go through two three you know different clicks you can uh, create those um, shortcuts that and you can create as many of them as you want uh, the only thing is that i would like to warn you that the more you create the more cluttered uh, this my favorites will become so use your judgment um, of course you can delete them at any point in time so if you don't want anymore you can click on um, uh, this uh, beam icon, and then uh, this is this disappears from your favorites, and you can uh, fill in this uh, screen, this this part of your um, um, of your page with uh, different links if you want. Now, the last thing that I would like to um, to highlight to you is um, an online help that we have built into the CCR. And you can get access to the online help by clicking on the button with a question mark uh, symbol on it. So if you're on your home on the home page and you click on that, then you get a pop up with a different options where you will get information about different parts of the CCR. So if you want to have information about report airplane operators, you click there. And then information on that appears on your screen. 
And depending on um, what information you want to see, you may have different tabs. Uh, this particular one has three tabs. One is called summary, the other on properties, the other on actions. I'm not gonna go through this in, in detail. Uh, you can play with it and you can see what kind of information is there. But just you know, on, the, on the summary one, is just some very basic information. And again, this information coming from the C, from um, Annex 16, Volume 4, just to give you a flavor of the information to be reported under this particular area. And uh, the, um, the help menu is um, accessible from different parts of the CCR and always where you see the question mark, if you click on it, you will get information for a specific uh, page. So for example, if I was in reports uh, grossly eligible fuels, and I click again on this question mark here, then this will automatically show me the information on grossly eligible fuels. So this is different you know, from what you saw earlier. When you're on your home page, you see the full list of different options. But when you click on, um, on the question mark from within a specific page, then it automatically gets the help on that specific page. So you have information on eligible fuels. If you want to see again from here, the complete list of uh, help options, you click on home at the bottom, and then you go back to um, uh, this full list of, um, um, of links with information on different topics. And you can close again by clicking either the X button or at the bottom of your screen, the close button. So this is what I, I want to show you um, on this homepage of the CCR. I think I took longer than I, I intended to. Um, I hope you all have access to the CCR. And as I mentioned, if you don't, uh, then we will uh, try and help you um, as, um, as, as much as, uh, as, as we can. Okay. We have a question we have from uh, Ms. Coralia Ortega. Um, okay. Um, what we will do is for those of you that have not received an email message, then uh, we will create an account again and um, we will make sure that you have access to the CCR. Uh, we'll try to take care of this um, in the break, a uh, 15 minute break, so you can have access uh, for the second segment of uh, the CCR. There was one question about, according to my page, there are two state users, but no focal point. Um, yes, uh, we can, this is, uh, this was done on purpose, uh, just to uh, show you that you can have more than uh, uh, two uh, state users. But um, what I would like to point out is that you cannot, as a state user, you cannot do much if you don't have a course or focal point. So don't worry about it for the second part of uh, the segment. Uh, we will make sure that um, one of you is identified as a Corsia focal point. So you can actually create uh, the year records and you can perform other tasks that um, you uh, need to do. Again, there was um, one question about providing information. Uh, Mr. Bourgeois, yes, uh, we will create an account. Uh, not a problem, we will do that straight away. Okay, I don't see any other questions um, on this. But again, if you have more questions, we can uh, answer them later. Okay, so I will stop here. I will give you the opportunity to, um, you know, play with, uh, with the homepage. Just, you know, feel free uh, to click around, look at different parts of it. And um, you know we'll um, reconvene in about five minutes, and then uh, we have any questions we can try to address them then. And then we're gonna have like a fifteen-minute break, and we will start with our segments at um, you know after the break. <laughs>